So, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the aisle, please do me a very big favor. Take your seats and let's start with session number five, please. Yes. I know it's a very long day. Hopefully it was successful for you all, but I guess it was. I had some very nice conversations going on early in the morning when I had breakfast. And even now it was absolute and I feel so humbled being here, being the host for two sessions. It's, it's an outstanding experience. And I need to address it also to you even if before we started because it's, it's, an, it's an absolute pleasure for me to host this. Some of you might know me maybe, <clears throat> German television. If you watch Welt, World, it's a broadcast where I'm visible 100 days a year doing, um, working as a stock exchange correspondent. This is due to the fact that I'm a former investment banker. I worked for Deutsche Bank and many other things. And uh, my background, because I was asked, my heritage is German-American. Um, beside that, <laughs> enough about me. It's about the Qatar German Business Forum, the second time after 2013 that it's taking place here in Berlin. And I welcome you all, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, back here in the room to participate in the session five, which has on the agenda, tourism, health and sports, the road to World Cup. For the very first time, it will be a World Cup <clears throat> in the, during the winter time. And I have some really interesting, fascinating speakers, guests on the panel, sharing their knowledge, um, sharing their experience with you, with us, with me. And of course, what we try to discuss here is the question how Germany could share its experience with the World Cup and what are the learnings that Germany can give to Qatar by hosting a World Cup already. We all remember 2006. Um, and the preparations, of course, we take a look on them, which are taking place in Qatar right now, and what opportunities there are for the tourism industry, also for the healthcare industry. And uh, traveling is a big factor. We have someone here on the stage who, um, in, our, um, in our talks that we had before the discussion, who, who mentioned that um, there are so, so few international flights going back and on from Berlin right now, direct flights. And you know that the BER, the big Berlin airport, is not finished yet. And um, due to the fact that Air Berlin is taking away number two on the, um, of the airplane companies, um, you have, you're running short of capacities, and we talk about that too. Then we're taking a look at the contributions, in fact, of cultural life that Germany could make to Qatar and Qatar vice versa could do to Germany, of course, and the role that the healthcare system, as mentioned before, would play um, partially coming all the way from the preparations to the World Cup 2022. But talking, talking enough right now from my side, let us introduce this session, this final session of today, through a video. So please enjoy an action. As Qatar prepares to host one of the most anticipated events in the world, Qatar's national development strategy will contribute to the country's 2022 football success through focusing on sport, health care, culture, public safety and security, and education. The health system in Qatar ranked 13th among the best health systems in the world and first in the Middle East, according to the 2017 Legatum for Prosperity Index. Hamad Medical Corporation has opened seven new hospitals and several specialized facilities since 2011. In the past two years alone, the corporation has opened four new hospitals in Hamad bin Khalifa Medical City. Qatar aims to provide all the tourism facilities necessary to receive its guests especially with the Qatar Airways fleet, which reaches most of the international airports and direct flights. This is supported with the construction of the largest airport in the region and the completion of its full stages, serving 50 million passengers in 2022. This airport was named the Middle East's best airport in 2018 for the fourth time in a row and ranked fifth in the world's best airports at Skytrack's best airports in the world. The Doha Metro project will be ready to serve the tourists in 2020, where more than 70% of the project has been completed. Qatar is also the most open destination in the region, following the implementation of a series of measures to facilitate its visit. 
The most important of these was the exemption of citizens from more than 80 countries from visa to the country and its fees. The Qatar Tourism Authority, QTA, cooperates with many German partners and participates in more tourism exhibitions and conferences such as Emacs Frankfurt and ITB Berlin and has opened a representative office in Germany to provide tourist attractions and offers. The Qatari private sector invests in many German hotels and this contributes well to attracting Qataris for medical tourism, especially with the presence of the Qatar Airways fleet, which reaches most of the German airports, in addition, of course, to Lufthansa. The oldest team in Germany, Bayern Munich, usually selects Aspire Sports Academy as an ideal destination for winter camps, and this reflects the depth of the relationship between the two countries. Joining us to talk more about the German model are Her Excellency Dr. Hanan al Kuwari. Minister of Public Health. His Excellency, Mr. Hassan al Dawadi, Secretary General, Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy. Mr. Andreas Young, Executive Board Member, FC Bayern Munich AG. Mr. Hassan al Ibrahim, Chairman, Qatar Tourism Authority. Mr. Christian Anderson, President of the German Hotel and Catering Association, Berlin. Mr. Mark Nola Harvey, Director, Digital Transformation Office, SAP EMEA South. Wow, what an introduction, what an introduction movie. What uh, some impressive people are sitting next to me here on this panel. And Your Excellency, Dr. Hanan al Kuvari, I'd like to start with you on this panel discussion. As the Minister of Health, we saw that in the film already. There are a lot of things for the, I remember the four hotels, for example, that were built within the last two years. On the road, on the back of the World Cup and the well-being, thanks to the World Cup 2022, what are the new policies that are implemented um, in the health system? Thank you very much for asking this question, and thank you very much for having us here with you today. Um, in terms of the World Cup, what we've noticed and um, what I've noticed on the ground is that it has really built an excitement for physical activity and wellness in the state of Qatar. Over the last five years, we've seen an increased awareness by the general public on the importance of health, lifestyle changes, uh, healthy nutrition, in order to prevent um, uh, the important diseases like diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. And the reason why this has had such an impact, I believe, is three. One, we celebrate sports and activity as a nation. His Highness has launched, as you know, an annual day for sports. And so once a year, um, schools and workplaces take off in order to participate in sport activities. Mm -hmm. That has truly had an impact on raising the importance on, and the perception of importance on sports. We also have many championship events that also promote activity and wellness, and that has had its repercussion on the public. Second, as a government, we put in place policies to help people take the right lifestyle decisions. So for example, we have healthy living campaigns that we've launched with our new national health strategy around better prevention of diabetes, um, preventing against smoking, and prevention against strokes and early um, diseases. Um, we also have a number of new legislations that we've introduced. The anti-tobacco law, we have um, reduced the number of, uh, or the quantity of salt in food products, and now we're working on the quantity of sugar in soft drinks. So the number of legislations that are passing through are also helping with improving the quality of the life in Qatar. And uh, finally, also, the, um, we as a country, we believe in collaboration and cooperation. And we like to share our experiences and learn from other countries that also are interested in um, health and well-being. So we share a lot with the WHO, we share with other countries are examples of policies that we've implemented mm -hmm. and, um, and we learn from their experiences. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Very interesting. I'll, I'll focus, I have some questions based on that uh, too later on. Your Excellency Hassan al Tawari, as the Secretary General of the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, how far are the preparations progressing for the World Cup 2022 uh, in terms of infrastructure, logistics, and um, facilities? <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, again, thank you for having me. It's an honor being on such an esteemed panel, and thank you all for being here at such a late day, or late time of the day. Um, 
The simple, very short answer is the projects are going according to schedule. We're, we're quite advanced, actually. Uh, we've had nine years to prepare, to plan and prepare uh, the requirements for the infrastructure as well as uh, moving on to the operational side and putting the plans ahead. So today uh, we have presented to FIFA a plan that in, uh, uh, implements eight stadiums. Uh, all the stadiums are at different levels of construction, but quite advanced. Actually, one of our stadiums, Khalifa Stadium, is ready, operational. It hosted last year, uh, sorry, two years, about a year and a half ago, the Emirates Cup Final, which is kind of like German FA Cup Final. Uh, we are ready uh, by 2019, two of our stadiums, two more stadiums will be ready by the first quarter of 2019, first half of 2019. Uh, by 2020, the, uh, the schedule, uh, we're on schedule to finalize all stadium development, so all construction on stadiums will be ready. Uh, in addition, the infrastructure work surrounding the World Cup is also uh, running according to schedule, and in some cases actually ahead of schedule. So for example, the metro system, uh, I believe by the end of this year would have finalized uh, its construction and would be moving on to the testing and commissioning phase. Uh, in terms of the expressways, we have about, uh, I think, 19 expressways that have been fi finished, uh, and the majority of the work will be ready by 2020 as well. So as I said, if you look at it in terms of uh, infrastructure work, we're, according to, we're moving according to schedule, and now we're moving on to a different phase. It's the phase of preparing operationally, preparing the nation operationally to host the World Cup. So we're talking about host country operations, ranging from uh, sewage, uh, sewage management, waste management, uh, onto uh, uh, the hospitality industry and the hospitality sector, along with our partners, uh, as well as the uh, uh, medical industry and so on, if, you know, for, for the uh, medical assistance. And we're now prepping up and gearing up on, on the operational side. Are there any learnings from the World Cups previously from Germany or from Russia that where you say, okay, there are some learnings that we can take away for our World Cup? Oh, of course, you always learn from, from, from your predecessors. There's no doubts about that. We've learned from South Africa, we learned from Brazil, we've learned from London in 2012. Uh, but no doubts for us, the benchmark was always Germany 2006 and recently as well, Russia. Russia 2018, I have to say, have also set a benchmark in terms of uh, hosting a very successful World Cup. And I think the main learnings we've got uh, to, to run through a very, very quick list um, obviously, uh, the operational and logistical uh, requirements are, are uh, and especially when it comes to security management, uh, implementing those ahead of time, managing those ahead of time, and including them both in your infrastructure development as well as in your operational requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but I think also maybe Germany 2006 in particular has highlighted quite extensively and quite successfully is the legacy beyond and the need to actually plan your legacy ahead of time. Legacy doesn't start after the tournament. Legacy starts from the minute you're granted the right to host the World Cup, you start planning for your legacy. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of the most uh, uh, important if, uh, and, and uh, major uh, lessons that we've seen. And as, as I said, Germany 2006 has, has uh, been a great example of that. Thank you very much. Um, it's very good to hear as a German that we did quite a good job <laughs> in, a, in a way. Not, like not, only, not, not <laughs> only emotionally, you know, that it made something really big here in this country. Um, so it's good that you refer to that. Um, Mr. Jung, you are executive board member responsible at FC Bayern Munich for everything that has to do with marketing. And what we all know and witness, because I'm a big fan of FC Bayern Munich um, since I'm three years old, um, that um, the Bundesliga team um, is going to Qatar now for the eighth year, I think, in a row uh, for their winter break, for the winter camp. Um, I would kindly ask you to describe the experience uh, of the yearly annual meeting and, and winter break that you take there and describe it with your own words to share it with us. First, good evening, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we had the first experience in the, in the Gulf area in the 2006 to 2008 when we have been in, in Dubai. And later on, our coach at that time recommended us just to, to move to um, Doha because he said, there is uh, the world best training center, Aspire. We have to go there. And for that reason, um, we, we started and we moved to, to Doha. We had, the, we had some negotiations with the people in, in, in Doha at Aspire. And the first year was in 2010 when we uh, moved there. And um, the feedback from the players was that it is absolutely incredible. The quality of the pitches, uh, it's so close. It's like feeling at home because you need not uh, to use uh, 
a bus or travel to, to the trading center because uh, the hotel is close to the, um, the, the academy, the, the hospital is next to the pitches. This is something, uh, the whole location is incredible and it's perfect for having a training camp there. And on to that time, till, till now, we are going there every year in, in, in this entire uh, period. We just had one season without a, 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 a title and the, all the other years we had at least one national or international title. So that shows us that it's for sure the, the right decision to, to go every year there to, to, um, to Doha, to the Aspire Academy. And on the other hand, it, it was something that, it, that developed uh, f something like a friendship in between the people there and, and, and us and our team. And this was growing and growing. And uh, the next step started then also in uh, 2016 um, when we made a cooperation with the, uh, with the people from the uh, Doha International, Hamad International Airport, where we had a cooperation which, is now, which now switched in that year from uh, the Hamad International Airport to, to um, the Qatar Airways. And I have to say, uh, this shows us that um, the people in, uh, in Qatar give us a big, big support on, on, on our intention to be there, and, and therefore we are very proud to have these cooperations. Mr. Jung, you mentioned that you went there for the eighth time and that um, with different coaches, head coaches, um, and that the um, circumstances there, that the facilities are in a perfect shape, if I may say it that way. Um, and of course, Bayern Munich gained uh, six titles in a row, um, and you said it. Is it just because also of the medical facilities available in Qatar that um, you are so successful with, with the cup? Um, to be honest, uh, I think they are perfect. But on the other hand, due to the reason that all the conditions are as such good, we never need the hospital up to now. <laughs> and I think this is uh, the best approval for for, for Aspire, but on the other hand, we know that we, in case of having any, uh, any uh, issues, that we could use um, a hospital with it, which is perfect, equipped like with MRA and so on, but up to now, across my fingers, we had nothing. Uh, otherwise, I should have asked Mr. muller huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He has not so much of trouble experience, maybe then, um, because there is no need. Mr. Al Ibrahim, as the acting CEO of the Qatar um, Tourism Authority, what I would like to ask you, and thanks for being here on our panel, what kind of visitors has Qatar been attracting from Germany so far, and how is the Qatar Tourism Authority growing the market of touristic? Sure. Our focus in the last two years had been so much on the experience rather than the growth itself. Uh, we perceive growth as a byproduct of enhancing the quality of the experience that we provide to the tourist. Uh, what kind of segments we were able to attract in the last couple of years, uh, our focus was to grow our partnership with the German cruise lines, mm -hmm. and hence too we started operations as of last year. And today we signed also with Ida and Costa. Um, Ida is, is a German-based cruise line as well, and this will grow our numbers again by at least double digit uh, as, as of the next season. Mm -hmm. um, and, and between now and 2020, we're expecting 200,000 people to come just a, 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 through the cruise lines that we have in Doha. The other segment that we focused on as well, as well is the transit traffic through Hamad International Airport. Uh, we've been enhancing our policies in Qatar for the last two years. Mm -hmm. We started with uh, uh, the facilitation of visa processing. Uh, so the transit visa had been provided f free of charge for any passenger that is willing to uh, uh, get a taste of the experience in Qatar and get a taste of our hospitality in Qatar. Then we worked very closely with Qatar Airways as well to restructure the fare where there won't be any financial implication for their decision to stop over in Qatar. And then we introduced a couple of, of uh, uh, products through Qatar Airways, which is the city tour program where people who are laying over or staying over for eight hours, they can just leave the airport, get a taste of the destination again, and they'll be your ambassadors when it comes to promoting your destination. And the other product which we launched as well with Qatar Airways is the Plus Qatar product, which basically provides certain segments of Qatar Airways uh, um, travelers to get a taste of the hospitality of the destinations through staying in some of the hotels in Qatar if they book within certain, certain classes. 
Um, in addition to these two segments, we focused as, as well on, on establishing and forging relationships with the German tour operators. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working for the last few years, ever since we established our commercial presence here in, in Germany, with boutique tour operators and not with the volume growth operators like Der Tour and TUI and, 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 and Thomas Cook and the likes of... So it's about, it's about quality then? Indeed, focusing so much on equality because at the end of the day, we don't believe in the, in the concept of build it and they will come. We believe in the concept of curate it and they will come. Mm -hmm. So curate the experience, make sure that you provide a quality experience and, and by default, as a byproduct, you will have growth coming with that. So when we got a better, a better understanding of the German market and the German, uh, um, the different segments within the market, we established our first large relationship with Der Tour. We also signed the, the, the partnership today with Der Tour to expand our relationship beyond the German borders. So, so we'll be working with them on, on multiple markets. And there will be other partnerships that we will be announcing really soon with the main tour operators that will help us with the growth as well. However, as I mentioned, Qatar, does not focus so much on a growth and, and mass tourism. We focus on individualized experiences and the quality of the experiences as well. And this is how we were able to, to achieve successfully double digit growth last year. And, and, and this year, till the end of August, we are achieving double digit growth again from the German market. Uh, that sounds very interesting. Um, and that brings me to another question. Are there certain main focus areas of tourism sectors um, that you want to rely on? You, you, you speak about, or you spoke about the quality, of course, and we saw the cruise lines, but are there other things, um, certain tours, um, some historical things maybe? Sure. So the value proposition for us as a destination focuses on, on fair, uh, four main, main pillars. So the authentic experiences, uh, and this is culture and heritage and, 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 and both modern and, 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 and old, uh, basically. Uh, family entertainment is another focus of ours. Uh, we focus so much on both the cultural and social sustainability of our destination. So we'd like to build a destination that will be uh, um, open, that accepts the, the segments that we will be targeting, and hence cultural and social sustainability is very important, and that's why we focus so much on family entertainment and the family segment. The third will be definitely the most obvious one, and, and this is the uh, sports fans. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just the sports fans, we also go one step beyond. As, as uh, Her Excellency the Minister of Health mentioned uh, very rightfully, we've been growing in terms of, of uh, awareness when it comes to physical activity and, and, and uh, health in general. Mm -hmm. And as a product of, of that or byproduct of, of such a growth, the events that are happening in Qatar, not just professional events, but even the amateur sports events, the participatory events, and cultural sports had been growing. And we've been supporting these events to attract more and more visitors from abroad. The last and also all an obvious segment which, which uh, had been growing for the last two decades is the MICE uh, sector. Qatar has the infrastructure. It has the airport, the airline, the hotels, and the MICE uh, uh, infrastructure to host mega events. And this is something that we've been focusing on and will be focusing on also moving forward. Thank you very much. Very Thank interesting. You. And uh, we'll take a look at what the, the, the outcome in the future will look like there when it comes even to the touristical side. When it comes to tu touristical and things, um, I'm very happy that here is joining us on our, um, on our panel is Mr. Christian Andresen, who is the president of the German Hotel and Catering Association. Congratulations for your election this year. Um, Especially here in Berlin, um, we were talking about um, earlier about tourists and the quality of tourists and the amount of tourists that are coming to Germany. Um, you, you told me that you see an, a huge number and in increasing tour, touristic um, industry. Um, do you see an end to this or is there still um, more to come from your perspective? First of all, thank you for inviting me to this panel. Second thing is, uh, please apologize my voice because I'm a little cold today. Um, and the th third thing is, uh, President for, for Berlin, not for Germany. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I can uh, speak best for the figures of Berlin. We have had a very huge increase every year after um, and, uh, the year 2006 from, from tourists. We are in uh, place three now in Europe um, when we uh, talk about people who stay overnight in Berlin. We have over 30 million now. After London and after Paris, we are on place three now. Um, the first big issue is that we have to finish our 
airport. Hope to do this in 2020. And you know, we lost our biggest uh, carrier last year, Air Berlin. But we have, even uh, after this leak, we have a plus from 4% till now in this year. And we think we have, uh, it will not end, but we have to see that we get a um, very close look of it, which kind of tourism we uh, will have in the future, and how we can do for the whole citizen in this uh, uh, country, uh, get a good tourism that we don't, because we see uh, maybe um, that like Amsterdam, like Barcelona, we have, we have to be careful not to over-tourism the city. Because when you have an over-tourism feeling for the citizens, it's, uh, uh, the increase is, will end. Ah, okay. Yeah, you know. So we are very hard working on it. There are two issues we have to uh, have a really close look on because I don't know if you know this, Berlin has only six international flights today. Copenhagen has 22 and uh, London and Paris 150, 130. Then my question is this, the, the expansion of tourists, uh, touristics and tourists, do they come from inside the country and do they come by car, bus or by train if you have a reduction of flights available? Or do they come by plane? Uh, most, when they come from international countries, they come over uh, Frankfurt and over Munich. Mm -hmm. But we wish to get them direct in the city. And uh, they, um, we are, have re really increasing fig figures about uh, the industry in Berlin, even at the startup industry. So we think uh, it's the best uh, moment to get more international flights started. Mm -hmm. um, the tourists in, in Berlin, are over 55% come from Germany itself. Um, and the, se the second thing, you, every time you have to see that um, trade fairs and congresses have to be in the right size in the city. Now we have a closed ECC, I don't know if you have heard about it, one of the biggest uh, uh, Congress uh, places uh, in Germany is closed till 2014 now, and we are discussing what to do and how to increase this, uh, uh, this uh, places, because we have, we have to see that we have get more quality in tourism. More quality is more quality for the hotels, for the restaurants, for the citizens, for everybody. More spending of money, more of spendings, course. of course, and it's good for everybody in this city. Okay, I understand that. Thank you very much. Uh, I take a closer look at that a, a little later on. I would like to welcome here on stage Mr. Noller, who is the Director, Digital Transformation Office at SAP, uh, responsible for the EMI Thaus. I, we were talking the whole day about digitalization, and what I would like to ask you is, how does SAP see the potential of IT and digital sectors to transform a national economy on the one hand, and how is SAP and Qatar deploying the technology across diverse sectors in line, for example, with the vision of TASMU and Smart Qatar? Thank you very much. Allow me in first place to thank your excellencies, the organizers and all the attendees for inviting SAP to be part to this event, which is so relevant to both our nations, Germany and Qatar. So, at SAP, we've been developing uh, software for over 40 years to transform industries. With the drive of our local team in Qatar, we're now able to support customers across many of these industries to move forward in this digital transformation. Um, to your question of how we see technology really fostering economic growth and supporting uh, these key initiatives, it is a journey. It starts, first of all, on how we support uh, the public sector in making the most efficient use of resources and offering the best services to citizens and to companies. For example, how we're working across ministries in Qatar on supporting the management of human resources, the growth of those human resources. But it's also how we offer and grow connected services to citizens, to companies. We've heard great cases today, like the single window, like the great healthcare services being offered. And at SAP, we see those as great opportunities to apply new technologies to create new services. Allow me to explain that with an example. In, in the state of Queensland, in Australia, 
We are able to support them with machine learning to analyze millions of citizens' interactions to now predict, in this case, when a citizen or a company is at risk of default in a payment. Mm -hmm. Of course, to avoid that situation, but also to understand why and how from a public authority we can proactively reach out to them and help them. That will be a key step moving forward to create new economic growth and foster new strategic initiatives. And finally, it's how do we use technology to improve citizens' lives? And that, at the end of the day, is one of the ultimate goals of the National Qatar Vision 2030. And specifically, if we look at the economic aspects, technology must help us in three ways. In first place, it must help us create new business opportunities. If I focus, for example, in, in tourism, a very relevant aspect also for Qatar 2022, we're now supporting huge uh, hotel brands across uh, the globe to analyze big data on consumers, on customers, on guests, to understand the pool of a destination. Which profiles are more interested to visit Doha, to be part of Qatar 2022, and to reach out to them through social media and engage throughout the whole journey. We, of course, need to apply technology also to grow and help Qatar continue to lead in the knowledge-based economy. We're collaborate, collaborating there, for example, with Qatar University to foster new digital skills and use technology also to help startups and entrepreneurs create the new business models. For example, we're going to run with Tasmo Smart Qatar, a hackathon with startups precisely focused on sports and Qatar 2022. So those are some ideas and experiences on how we can support this kind of initiatives. Thank you very much for what you said, um, Mr. Nola. To be a little bit more precise, I would kindly go a little deeper and ask you, because you were talking about the World Cup 2022, what is SAP's vision on the role of the digital transformation and what role must it play in gearing up to Qatar to host the FIFA World Cup successfully from your standpoint? Qatar 2022, we, we all agree, is going to be an absolutely historic moment. It's, um, in the words of the global CEO of Qatar Airways in yesterday's gala dinner, an opportunity for sports to bring people together from across the world. But in that vision from the Supreme Committee, that it's much more than sports. It's going to allow us, through technology, to bring together citizens, fans, and businesses through the technology. So, Sports and this kind of events is a key focus area for SAP, and we're working in three key areas through innovation. One of them is the event, the sport, the game itself, how we can use um, team performance analytics. We're learning there from top teams like the German national team, like uh, top clubs like, uh, like Bayern, on how we can use analytics to improve the performance of these teams, but also grow new skills. For example, our collaboration with the Aspire Academy in Qatar. In second place, it's how we use technology and experience across industries to make a complete journey for that fan, for that guest within Qatar, within the World Cup. So we're supporting through online engagement with the fans through connected stadium engagement, for example, in the Allianz Arena with, with Bayern, on that complete journey from the ticketing experience to avoid risks, experimenting, for example, with blockchain to prevent fraud <laughs> in, in the ticketing space, to the whole journey on planning how I access that event, how I can use machine learning for safety and in guaranteeing the best experience during the World Cup. We believe that this kind of convergence of technology, of business models on an intelligent platform is really what's going to guarantee that Qatar 2022 is the best World Football Cup yet. <laughs> yeah, we keep our fingers crossed that it's going to be, you know. Um, it's, it's, of course, a great experience, and it will be a great experience. Um, that brings me again to, to Mr. Jung. Uh, Mr. Jung, I would love to know, because we heard so much about um, the potential that this World Cup brings, not only to Qatar, but also to Qatar. And I would like to ask you what potential future partnerships the FC Bayern Munich can build to Qatari organizations, um, build on, on that bright future that is shining on the horizon. Well, I think um, the German Chancellor, Mrs. Merkel, she said this morning that Qatar is um, 
a very important partner for Germany. And this shows uh, generally that there is a potential for that. And I think um, if you take uh, Qatar Airways that we started with the cooperation right now, uh, we do have on, on the international competition with other international clubs, uh, we, want, we are looking for emerging markets in, in, in Asia, in, in, in America and, and North America and so on. And there we get the support from, from Qatar Airways, for example, with, due to the destination that they do have that we can uh, make uh, common, common strategies. One of that was, for example, when we have been in, in, in the summer break, we have been in, in America and we used um, the new A350 of, um, of Qatar Airways and it was the first time that this plane touched in, in, in North America. So uh, that was quite a, a good combination of communication in between these two brands. And I'm convinced that there are much more. And I think that will grow in the future because we are at the, at the beginning of this cooperation. And it shows that it is successful for both sides. And, and therefore, I'm convinced we will have in the future the chance to get new partners in Qatar as well. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, Your Excellency Al Tawadi, I would like to ask you what um, do you think is the role of the private sector in the delivery of the um, World Cup 2022? And what opportunities do you see for German business in delivering um, World Cup projects to Qatar? I think the role of the private sector is, is uh, fundamental. I mean, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, when we talk about legacy for the World Cup, uh, no doubt it's one of the most important legacies that most nations try to achieve uh, if we summarize it, basically, it's nation branding, promoting the values of the nation. And secondly, uh, although it's sometimes difficult to achieve, it's, uh, it's the economic side of it, uh, the economic benefits uh, that it offers. Now, for us, when we plan to host the World Cup, one of the most important uh, fundamentals was to s assist in the country's vision of developing a healthy and vibrant private sector. Uh, so from the very beginning, we've looked at opportunities and every opportunity that we had where the private sector can be involved. Uh, obviously, when it comes to the infrastructure side, uh, I think being involved within the different levels of the supply chain. Um, as we mentioned earlier, technology plays a very, very important part in this, and we've been looking at uh, different, creating different opportunities, not only just in Qatar, but within the Arab world. I mean, it's, it's important maybe uh, to highlight that this is a World Cup. His Highness had mentioned it even in Russia when we, when we received the official uh, uh, emblem, if you will, for, 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 for you know, the start of the 2022 World Cup, that this was not a World Cup that was limited to Qatar. It's actually an Arab World Cup. So the idea was to support also private initiatives, uh, private companies within the Arab world as well, uh, in, in trying to benefit, uh, and as well as the youth from the Arab world as well, for, in benefiting from this World Cup. So no doubt, uh, we have uh, launched many initiatives. One of the initiatives that we launched is, is something called Challenge 22, where we support the entrepreneurs and the uh, uh, innovators of the Arab world. Uh, we launch um, uh, challenges every year, f ranging between four to five challenges. Uh, it's a competition. Uh, the winners receive a financial support, uh, ranging between uh, sometimes twenty-five to fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But more importantly, also they receive mentorship from, oh, yeah. uh, from uh, uh, entrepreneurs, from obviously uh, 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 representatives of the private sector in Qatar and otherwise in terms of making their concepts, whatever it is, or their, or their businesses, successful. And the idea is to utilize these opportunities or these companies within our supply chain and to use this as a, plat a platform to launch them, whether it's regionally or even potentially globally, mm -hmm. and to try to grow these young, um, these, these young entrepreneurs through the World Cup. And one of the main reasons is because I think any, any vibrant culture, any vibrant economy requires a healthy, small, medium enterprise uh, sector. I think as, as uh, Chancellor Merkel had mentioned earlier, this is one of the growing uh, sectors within the, within the German economy and, and, and it's, a, it's an indication of how essential it is for, for, a, vital, for, a, um, for, a, uh, for a healthy economy. And that's why we've launched some of these initiatives. As I said, Challenge 22 is one of them. We've obviously, any opportunity that we have to enter into uh, uh, private-public partnerships with, with companies, we've entered into them. One example is uh, up north, we have a stadium, Al Khor Stadium, or the Tent Stadium, uh, El Bait Stadium. This, uh, there's, a, there's a part of it that requires provision of a co um, accommodation. We've actually provided that opportunity to a company that was established by the residents of Al Khor City to offer that service to the company, to, to, you know, to the World Cup, to be part of that supply chain. 
And based on that, any opportunity that we have to offer the private companies, we, we definitely move on to. Again, the same thing, sorry, just to answer your, la your the last point. The German companies, of course, no doubts. I think the experience that was gained in 2006 in terms of mega sporting events is, is valuable, and, and we've had many uh, uh, partnerships, you know, not le least of which is, for example, with Siemens. We've got a, a very vibrant, very uh, strong relationship with Siemens uh, that is assisting us in terms of building the, sta uh, uh, building the stadium and infrastructure required. Obviously, now that we're moving towards the operational side, that's also an area that there's many significant opportunities available uh, for the German companies. Yeah, and, and of course, the SMEs here traditionally in Germany, they are family-owned. Yes. Uh, is there something comparable in Qatar that the, the smaller or the startup are, are family-owned companies as well, or? I, I think in, in the private sector, generally speaking, I mean, I, you know, I look throughout the crowd and there's many representatives of, of, of a very healthy and vibrant sec uh, private sector in Qatar who are actually family-owned companies that have grown. And I think uh, also uh, there's many, many members of the uh, audience as well, I can see them, that are also part of the young generation, young entrepreneurial generation. Uh, it's actually quite an exciting time right now. There, there's quite a number of young companies coming on board, um, some of them in the FMB sector, some of them in the service sector. Uh, there's a few companies that we've looked at in the technology sector, uh, which uh, one of them is, for example, uh, the concept of a one-stop shop where you can access uh, all different services uh, uh, through different portals that, that we're actually exploring right now. It's a young Qatari company that's been developing this, uh, this industry. Uh, through Challenge 22, we've, we've found a number of very unique innovators that are moving now onto the entrepreneurial side. So as a result of Challenge 22, uh, we've had a professor in a university who uh, developed an insulation system technology uh, to insulate heat. And he started off as a, as a you know, it was, it was a research project Challenge 22 actually inspired him to move on to the entrepreneurial side, and now he's become an entrepreneur. So there's many different success stories in that, se in that sector. So to understand you right, through the World Cup of 2022, you have a lot of people who feel inspired, and there is, in a way, an entrepreneurial movement, so to say? I will say uh, we're a little bit more ambitious than that. Yes, the, the World Cup has inspired an entrepreneurial movement, no doubts about that. Uh, I will go and, and I say it with a lot of, a lot of uh, humility. Uh, the World Cup in Qatar 20, sporting events generally inspire movements. They really do. And as you said, Germany 2006 is, is one fantastic example. I will even go back in history and say Germany winning the World Cup in 1934 was another inspirational moment for a nation. And I believe the World Cup in Qatar has inspired a nation, and it's not just the Qatari nation, but rather the Middle East and Arab nation. Mm -hmm. There's many different uh, uh, movements, uh, whether on the social side, whether on the entrepreneurial side, economic side, uh, that this World Cup is truly working very hard to, to achieve. It's a very grand ambition, not the least of which is trying to uh, build bridges between the East and the West, bringing people together. We've seen the success in 2006. We've even, even seen the success in 2018 in Russia. We are aspiring to break the mold. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Your Excellency, Dr. El Khouari, I would like to know, because we were talking about the private sector on the one hand, but the, of course, um, the health system in Qatar um, and the role the private sector plays in exactly the health system is different because usually a lot of money comes from the state and uh, the state invests in the health services. When, it, when you switch it a little bit from the, from the state to the private sector, what opportunities do you see from German companies to invest in the health system in Qatar? Um, well, already the relationship between Qatar and Germany in the health sector is very strong. I would say Germany is the largest uh, partner we have, in, especially in the field of medical technology and the pharmaceutical area in healthcare. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities for German companies and the private sector in Germany to continue to contribute, especially when it comes to infrastructure development and system development or um, service development. Um, so as you've seen in the uh, presentation, Qatar has very high standards for quality. And um, we're very ambitious and we aspire to bring the best of medical practice and of protocols to our patients in Qatar. And Germany has very high standards. And, and you also aspire to bring the best to your patients. And I believe that that is a very good opportunity for collaboration. In terms of infrastructure, um, both the public and private sector in Qatar are undergoing massive um, growth. So in terms of uh, public hospitals or public system, over the 
uh, next four years, we'll be witnessing the opening of 12 hospitals and 10 um, wellness centers. Are these general hospitals? Um, these are uh, specialty as well as general hospitals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a combination. Um, and also in the private sector, we've seen the doubling of the private uh, sector beds over the last couple of years. And we have a strategy to support the private sector development with the aim of increasing the role of the private sector about 25% per year. So that's very ambitious. Mm -hmm. And the government has subsidized a number of private sector projects, um, especially subsidizing land and, and uh, facilitating uh, uh, policies and protocols to help hospitals that would like to set up in Qatar um, hospitals from across the world that would like to partner with uh, Qatari um, uh, businessmen and set up hospitals in Qatar, um, uh, the pharmaceutical manufacturing industry, if they would like to participate in the, in the sector. So there's a heavy government subsidizing in these areas. So that's for the private sector. Mm -hmm. um, and also in terms of service development, we always seek um, partnerships for training and developing of our workforce. So we train a lot of doctors here in Germany, and I know there's a few here that are trained in Germany. Um, we also send our patients to Germany, but more important, the relations we build with the private hospitals or the public hospitals that we send our patients to is one that is um, around knowledge transfer. So the doctors, German doctors come to practice in Qatar, um, and they transfer the knowledge and practice to our doctors. Um, and the same um, is across the um, uh, uh, quality improvement. So we have joint research mm -hmm. with um, uh, hospitals in um, Germany. And for example, we have a very strong partnership with the University Hospital of Heidelberg. Okay. So we have a long-standing relation with them. Over the last 10 years, they've helped us build a number of programs. And um, our emphasis on research, on development, on new protocols, means that there's always opportunities for the public and private sector in Germany con to contribute to their counterparts in Qatar. Is there a certain program um, and exchange in certain areas of hospital, uh, in, the, in the hospital areas, we say there, there needs to be an increase because there is on the one or the other side a lack of um, knowledge? Um, because we're developing so rapidly, we are always seeking um, uh, knowledge and development in the different areas. So mm -hmm. we're very open to um, any sector or specialty that would like to come and contribute to the development of Qatar. We have areas that we emphasize in. So for example, we have a high incidence of diabetes. So we're always looking for experts in diabetes who are willing to come and set up practice in Qatar. We have very strong protocols, our own protocols, but we look for international collaborations in these areas. Cancer is another one, neuroscience is another one. So a number of disciplines that we're uh, welcome um, uh, our German uh, colleagues to come and participate in. From your experience, this question goes a little deeper. Um, is Do you have the impression that here the, the infrastructure that you found in hospitals um, is, is made or needs to be adjusted in, in, in a way to, to get along and to deal with those cooperations from Qatari? Because sometimes my impression is here in Germany that there is a lot of bureaucracy and there are a lot of um, long-term investments and stuff. It's not so fast when you're talking about fast development. Yes. Is, is this um, a, a hurdle that needs to be overcome somehow yes. from your experience? Um, I think that the German hospitals, uh, public and private, are doing a very good job towards that. So I think we as Qatar, we have a very um, a strength our strength is our rapid development. So that is very unique to Qatar. We have developed very rapidly and we continue to develop very rapidly at very high standards. But the German hospitals, our counterparts, have also uh, been adapting to work with our patients. So we've noticed that a lot of the public hospitals that we work with, as well as the private hospitals, are um, uh, improving their processes to work with our patients better. So um, uh, introducing translation services, fast track processes, and um, a lot of the German businesses are working very strongly in, in Qatar and have already adapted to the region. So that sounds like a perfect win-win situation on both sides uh, in the health um, system, which is, which is great to hear, to get some feedback mm -hmm. from, from you here um, towards the German hospital um, infrastructure. Um, Mr. Ali Ibrahim, um, the thing is, we were talking about the World Cup already um, and the huge development, and I, we learned that you're very rapidly working in Qatar on a general basis. You have a lot of entrepreneurship going on. Um, 
when we were talking about sustainability, um, of course, due to the hospitality requirements for the World Cup in 2022, um, sustainability is, of course, a challenge. And how do the QTA address that issue? When, when we're talking about sustainability, again, I, I think you're referring to the number of units and the number of, of hotels that will be exactly. coming online very soon. Um, the plan that both uh, the Supreme Committee of Delivery and Legacy and, and the Qatar Tourism Authority put for the accommodation, and Qatar does not depend just on hotels that will be built moving forward. Uh, from day one, uh, the country decided not to build white, white elephants, uh, <laughs> so not to build uh, an overcapacity of hotels, not to overinvest in infrastructure that, that will not be utilized also beyond the World Cup, but build uh, uh, enough capacity that will cater to the World Cup and then the excess demand that will, will be created because of a mega event will be uh, uh, catered to through temporary accommodation. That will be through the cruise ships that will be used for temporary accommodation. That will be through the fan villages that will be built for that purposes. That will be also for uh, uh, the regular apartments that will be transformed into serviced apartments or serviced uh, units that will cater to, to that uh, segment as well. The same applies to the destination management companies. We're trying now to work very closely with the destination management companies in Qatar to grow their capacity and to grow their capabilities, uh, both in terms of uh, 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 capex investment as well as uh, uh, human ca capacity as well. Uh, and we're attracting other DMCs that usually move from one country to another to uh, provide services for the fans of the World Cup. And then after the World Cup, they'll just shut down the store and move somewhere else while mm -hmm. the local DMCs will grow their capacity in order for them to receive more and more tourists beyond the World Cup. Uh, so th that, that had been our focus uh, uh, and it is our focus moving forward, not to overbuild, not to over uh, uh, staff, not to over uh, do things that will not be sustainable on the longer term. Did you have experiences then uh, from the World Cups uh, in Germany, in South Africa, in Russia, where you have takeaways and lessons learned that you can say, okay, we expect these amounts of people to come and um, to, to have uh, this uh, amount of hotels available and infrastructure available? Oh, de definitely, definitely. So while we are learning from other World Cups, but our World Cup is going to be... Uh, uh, a bit different in terms of t the challenge that we will have. While the other World Cups are spread in many cities in, 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 in these countries, our challenge is going to be we're going to have a World Cup in, a, in, in Doha, most probably. And, and we need to deal with this challenge. We need to make sure that we are delivering to the experiences that we're promising, the amazing experiences that we're promising the world. It's going to be challenging, but it's going to be a, a, a nice challenge, a beautiful challenge that we will take forward. The challenge is how to individual, individualize these experiences to the masses that will be coming to the World Cup. Yes, we are, as I mentioned, the growth is very important and the World Cup will help us grow as a destination, but we need to focus so much uh, on the quality of experience. We've learned a lot from the Russia World Cup, we've learned a lot from, from Brazil's World, World Cup and definitely the World Cups before, uh, but again, our challenge is going to be very unique and, and this is something that we are learning every day more and more about as we move forward. So um, if I just interject here, just to add on to my, my, my colleague has without... Of course. Uh, <laughs> but it's, I mean, as he correctly mentioned, um, the previous, the preceding World Cups, actually the three preceding World Cups, South Africa, Brazil, Russia, uh, were hosted in vast nations. Uh, Qatar, obviously, uh, in terms of size, it's, it's a much smaller uh, uh, geographically uh, or physical uh, country. But as you correctly pointed out, it's a challenge, but at the same time, it's actually an advantage, and that's what we've always tried to utilize. We've tried to create, uh, we've always looked at what was considered a challenge, and rather it being a stumbling block, we used it as a stepping stone onto uh, uh, providing a unique experience. Uh, the size of the country allowed us to deliver a, a unique concept, which is the Compact World Cup, which is effectively providing the Olympic experience, if you will, but in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. So rather than... Uh, Mainly, let's say, let's take for example teams, national teams. Usually, in the previous World Cups, they would have to travel from uh, city to city, vast uh, distances, uh, land in different locations, acclimatize themselves to an accommodation, training site, and then go perform at the highest level uh, on on the pitch. In the Qatari World Cup, you won't have that. It's actually a compact World Cup, so the accommodation will be one. 
teams will be able to focus on delivering uh, their best on the football pitch. The same thing if you take, for example, fans. While it is a challenge in terms of size, but at the same time, it offers the fan, fans a very unique experience. It offers them the, the opportunity to potentially even watch more than one match a day. They can match the first, fans can watch the first match and potentially the third or fourth match in the same day as well. Uh, access to the stadiums is quite, uh, it's, it's quick. Mm -hmm. uh, especially considering the, the fact that the um, transportation infrastructure is uh, going to be state of the art and up and, up and running very, very soon. Uh, so again, as I said, uh, the, size of the, the size of the country, it does offer challenges. And I think what Russia and, and South Africa and Brazil have shown us is that um, the vastness does come with advantages. The, the si our size does offer challenges, but at the same time, it is a very, very unique experience uh, that, that I think will uh, resonate mainly with fans and I believe also more importantly with the football, with, with, with the football players themselves. And you will see higher quality football on the pitch. I have another question. It's a, a kind of a personal question because it's already f four years until the World Cup starts and it's in the winter time. Yes. I would love to come after this experience sharing all with you ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, honestly. The question is how do you ensure that, that um, normal people beside me, because I know it now, uh, get, get an information about the World Cup? Is, are there any further plans in marketing well, uh, about showing the attractiveness of the country that it's small combat? Because all those things that you mentioned are a big advantage. Because, well, I mean, I, I did not went to Russia, not because of Russia, but because of the big, fast distances. And having so much compact uh, next to each other, this um, and, and what you said about um, Mr. Al Ibrahim, what he said about um, the surroundings and the cruises and the, the whole tourism industry, it looks so attractive to me. So how could you develop and not only develop it or spread the, the news of the country even more and are there plans for the next year? No doubt. Uh, it's important to keep in mind when we, when we uh, were granted the right to host the World Cup in 2010, we actually had a number of World Cups preceding us. So we had um, uh, Brazil and then after that we had Russia. And obviously to promote the World Cup and a lot of the initiatives that we're talking about, it's in coordination and cooperation with FIFA. So we were not promoting the World Cup before, uh, the, you know, or we couldn't promote the World Cup before the end of Russia. Mm -hmm. Now that Russia's over, of course, uh, that's not to say that we weren't in the spotlight, we we're in the spotlight from day one. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, now we're, we're on the, uh, we're, we're very soon going to be launching uh, our emblem, we're going to be launching uh, uh, the, the mascot and moving on from there towards promoting the World Cup, our World Cup. Uh, we have a number of fantastic ambassadors that are uh, not only just promoting and launching our, our, our initiatives, whether it's our CSR initiatives, our environmental initiatives, entrepreneurial and so on, uh, but we're also very, very soon going to be promoting the World Cup, the spirit of the World Cup, which is what you just mentioned just now. So that's coming up soon. Okay, thank you very much. And you, of course, you were right, mentioning that you, you have to wait until Russia's World Cup is finished uh, as a matter of the respect towards Russia, of course. This is what I did not... Uh, Thought about, um, Mr. Andresen, these are these these descriptions that we heard from from Qatar and the environment there. Would you would you love to have the same environment, and especially when it comes to sustainability here in Berlin? Because you were mentioning before quality tourism. I haven't understood the question. No, no, you were mentioning quality tourism yeah. and um, the infrastructure circumstances that Qatar um, uh, has to offer. Yeah. Do you wish sometimes that you have the same environment and that you are working on and that you are, could make your plans for Berlin as a city when it comes to tourism and stuff? Well, I think uh, the, the really relative things are you have to think over what your issues in the city are every time. We have a very good tourism um, bureau, Visit Berlin. They make a really great, great job and we work really hard all together in the city, even the trade fair, even the government, even Visit Berlin, even IHK, uh, to get new ideas, uh, to, to get uh, new tourism for the city. And I think you have to work on this every, every time. And we have, uh, you have seen this last days, really, a really incredible city. We call it nowadays the city of freedom. This is our, our claim. Okay. Because you feel free when you're here in the city. You can do everything you want. You can go as you are. Um, and think you have to have an idea what the people can uh, get in the city you, you are living in. And the same is for Qatar. You have to see which is the story for the future after these games. Thank you.
Um, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen here on the panel. Uh, the panel, <laughs> the plan, I'm sorry, I'm a little mixed up on the panel for this very interesting discussions. And I'm looking definitely forward, I don't know what you think, uh, Your Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, to the World Cup in Qatar. The bad thing is, there are still four years to go <laughs> until it happens, but we're... Still four years to go, there's only four years Only to go. four years to go. Thank you very much. I think the positive way. Before we leave, um, it's an honor for me to um, invite here on the stage His Excellency Mr. Mohammed Abdullah Al Khrumayi to deliver the closing speech, and I would kindly ask you to do so. Um, it was done spontaneously. Warm applause. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, you stay. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, say thank you. Uh, it's a, a great forum we had uh, today in. Uh, Germany and uh, this forum uh, really is exceptional because uh, we had uh, 10 agreements and MOU signed uh, around that table and uh, seven of them were of the private sector and three of them were from the government institutions so that was very important More important also, uh, His Highness the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, uh, declaration uh, about investing 10 billion euro in the German economy within the next uh, five years. So again, thanks to Sheikh Hamad. And thanks to Her Excellency uh, the Chancellor Merkel, uh, also opening an area of investment. Where is the interest? for these uh, 10 billions to go in Germany. So thanks to uh, Her Excellency as well. Okay, Th thank you for accepting to come and uh, uh, being patient up to this time of the evening. It's already seven mostly and uh, uh, still in this room there is a lot of people. So thanks to our friends from Germany. Thanks to our friends also from Qatar. Yes. So uh, usually uh, we say uh, we will see you next in uh, this, but we will see you next soon because I invite you to come to Doha. We had a lot of uh, talk, a lot of opportunity, exchange of cards, uh, maybe partnerships today, and that is the success really. So you make our success. Uh, your participation, but your visit to Doha often will make it greater and more important. So see you in Doha soon, inshallah, and I wish to everybody a blessing evening and uh, a safe return to Doha also. Thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you very much on the panel. Um, that's it. A very successful uh, Qatari-German business forum ends for the second time. Network. Do what you have to do, reach your planes. It was a pleasure hosting you, and see you next time, whenever this will be. It was a very, we're a very, very great experience. Thank you. So